Ciao! Welcome back to the channel. We're just a few days away from Google I.O. of this year, so I thought that it would be nice to complete my series about Google Maps, which I've composed before that, since after that I will have a lot of topic to cover and to go through in my videos. So today's topic is Type Provider. Type Provider is the last overlay that I haven't already covered it, that allows us to draw something on top of a Google Map instance in Google Map in Jetpack Compose. A type provider is an overlay that provides chunks of images or clustering of images to draw on top of Google Map for a given position at a given zoom level. The type provider exposes a method which is get tile needs to return the tile to be used for this tile coordinate. The parameter are x, y and its zoom. A tile overlay is a set of images which are displayed on top of the base map tiles. These tiles may be transparent allowing you to add a feature to existing map. The type provider provides the images that are used in the type per overlay. Note that the word is projected using the Mercator projection with the left, the west, side of the map corresponding to minus 180 degrees of longitude and the right, the east side of the map, corresponding to 180 degrees of longitude. To make the map square, the top, north, side of the map corresponds to 85.0511 degrees of latitude and the bottom, south, side of the map correspond to minus 85.0511 degrees of latitude. Areas outside this latitude range are not rendered. At each zoom level the map is divided into tiles and only the tiles that overlap the screen are downloaded and rendered. Each tile is square and the map is divided into tiles as follow. At zoom level 0, one tile represents the entire world. The coordinates of that tile are x, y, 0, 0. At zoom level 1, the world is divided into four tiles arranged in a 2x2 two two grid. At zoom level n, the world is divided in, into four on, by n tiles arranged by 2x2x2 two by n, by two by n grid. The coordinates of the tile are measured from the top left northwest corner of the map. So the type provider is actually an interface, as you can see here, that exposes a no tile, which is a tile with width minus one, height minus one, and a null byte array. There is a function get tile that receives three parameters, which are x, y, and zoom. And that it, this is the function that we will need to override in order to create a tile to be represented on the map. Google, time ago, used a coordinate tile provider to show the coordinate or the values received from the get tile function directly on the map. This is the code that they used. What basically happens here is that they, whenever the get tile function is called, they draw the tile coordinates on the canvas. And as you can see here, they use a bitmap and draw the coordinates as x and y and zoom on the canvas using a text paint. They then return the bitmap and they compress the bitmap into a byte array and create the tile in order to be rendered on the screen. I imported this class into my project here and I did some changes to how the paint is used to draw those parameters on the screen in order to be a little bit more visible. Now, this is a class, so we can use it directly inside Google Jetpack Compose, Google Map Library. What we will need is the tile overlay function. The tile overlay function is a Google Map Composable function that accepts a tile provider, a state, which is a tile overlay state, a fade-in Boolean value, and all the other parameters that all overlays for Google Maps in Jetpack Compose accept, or transparency, if it's visible, the z-index at which to draw, and the on-click to listen to clicks on the, on the tile overlay that we provide. So let's go ahead and start using this tile overlay function inside our Google Map instance and use the coordinate tile provider. With just this, we will be able to show the tile provider on the map, but 
let's define all the other parameters that it requires. So we need a state, which is well, remember dial overlay state, a fade in, which we will set to false this time. Transparency will be 0f in order to see it completely. The visibility will be true. The Z index, let's say it, it's 3, so it will be slightly above the other Google Map components. And let's define an on click method as well, which returns a tile overlay. And for now, do nothing with it. Now, if I run the application, we will see that on top of our Google Map instance, there will be some more things like the coordinates provided by the get tile function printed on the screen and as you can see the zoom level is 12 so the map would be divided in a lot of squares if we zoom out the number of squares diminished and until we get to the zoom level the minimum zoom level which is true for now we can zoom out or in even further and you will see that the tiles will change and those are not already all drawn on the map. They will be drawn as needed whenever we move the camera of the map. Those number might seem a little bit random to you. Like this is not a uh, latitude and longitude numbers for sure, but they are a standard and almost everyone knows about them and let you use them as you wish. For example, the Map Tyler Cloud website allows you to create or use predefined tiles into your map by providing you an URL given an X, Y, and Zoom, and they will return a given tile based on those values. You can see that this, the website provides you the raster tiles to be used inside of your project. But to do that, as these require a new URL, you will need to use a new URL type provider. A URL type provider is an abstraction over a tile provider, so the class that we've seen before, that Google gives us in order to make our lives easier. We just need to override get tile URL, which needs to return a URL that points to the image to be used for this tile. So I went ahead and created a class that uses, that override the URL type providers, generates the URL template that accept the three numbers being the X, Y, and Zoom level, and then create the tiles by just generating a URL, formatting the URL template and providing the Zoom, X, and Y level. This way, if we want to use that instead of something else, we can easily do that. So we need the DPI in order to create this new map provider. We still need to call the tile overlay function with a new tile provider, which will be our map tile provider. Now let's go ahead and define the other as well as we did before and decreasing its at index in order to have this one drawn below the other one that we want to draw. Now, if I run the app, you will see that there will be something drawn on top of the map and not the coordinates anymore. And there we go. A nice overlay of the entire Great Britain is drawn on our map. As you can see, it's not drawn on the enter of the word, but the overlay is just for this. There is a no tile that gets drawn on the other side of the map. Now, if I uncomment this bit, which basically load a map style from a JSON file that I have defined as everything is invisible, it will be easier to spot that there is the overlay only above London and the Great Britain. As you can see, outside of this tile, there is nothing drawn on our maps. Now, let's combine the two and draw the coordinate as well. And as you will see, since the Z index is higher on this one, there will be the coordinates of the scene before on top of the images provided by this URL type provider. And there we go. We can see that the blues are drawn. 
and you can see that they matches perfectly when there is a cut outside of the boundaries and when and where it's not drawn. You can obviously create your own images if you need to. Um, if you need to restrict the visual representation of the map to a given area, it's not that hard to create as many images as you need and load them from the asset folder. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to do so. I would recommend to unload these to a server and just use the URL type provider providing a URL to download the image itself. Another thing I wanted to, to show you is this class, which is a cache type provider. This was used in a sample project of Google I.O. Schedule. And it's basically a cache wrapper of our tire provider that uses a disk LRU class to store the uh, snapshot and of the images and not try to fetch them every time you need them, but just when they're not used already. So for example, now if I start moving the map outside and go ahead, zoom in, zoom out, and so on, the URL type provider will try to fetch the same URL over and over again. If you wrap everything with this class, the get tile, it's not really used if there is already a tile in the cache, which might save you a lot of resources. And this concludes my series about Google Maps with Jetpack Compose here on the channel. As I've shown you, everything possible to draw on, on a Google map with Jetpack Compose instance, starting from the easiest part as the marker clustering, moving into more complex ones as circle, rectangles, polygons, polylines, and moving way in the hardest part with ground overlay that we've seen in the previous video and in this video, the tile overlay. I hope you enjoyed my videos. You can see all of them now on the screen somewhere. I don't know. If you're interested, please give them a watch, give them a like. It really means a lot to me. And until the next time, which will be soon, thanks to all the content that Google I.O. will be releasing next week. Peace.